Welcome to the American Landscape. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell to be reminded of all our future travel videos. One country, 50 states, and many roads. It's all about the American road trip. So please join me and together we'll visit roadside attractions, fascinating museums, unique landmarks, and offbeat points of interest. Hi, welcome to the Wrigley Mansion. Come on in. Welcome to the Museum of the Forgotten Warrior. But most importantly, we'll experience the inspiring people and grandeur of the American landscape. Today, we're heading up to Solving to see the Everhoek Museum of History and Art and learn a little bit of Danish history. It's just 43 miles from Santa Barbara, California, 128 miles from Bakersfield, California, and 203 miles from Fresno, California. So please sit back and relax and enjoy the show. Hi. Is it Kirsten? Kirsten. I'm Greg. Hi, Greg. Hi, thanks for having us. Oh, good to have you. Welcome to El Verhoi. Welcome to El Verhoi. You are at the Hill of the Elves. It is named for the uh, Danish play El Verhoi, meaning the Elfin Hill. It was originally a Hans Christian Andersen fairy Very tale. Cool. Yeah. Now, I notice you go in and out of Danish real easily. Are you Danish? I am. My, yeah, my grandfather Danish. came from Olbo, Denmark in the 1920s. Sorang is my hometown. So we're in a very cool looking house. Uh, was this is this a reproduction? Is this... this is probably the most authentic Danish building in Solvang. Oh. This is a true Danish half timber structure. And this was built by Vigo and Martha. Vigo was an artist from Denmark. He grew up in an 18th century Danish farm home. Mm. So he knew something of them. So he wanted to kind of, uh, in a way, recreate that for his family when they settled here in the late 40s. Nice. So they nice. built this home using no power tools. They used no nails. So they used 18th century tools and techniques and uh, hand hewed all the beautiful beams here. So yeah, you are standing in a true Danish half timber structure. It's still all original? It is all original. The, the Everything from the beautiful iron work, the hand painting, the hand carvings, the front door. Yeah, Did you notice the front door? Yeah. So uh, that was hand carved by Vigo. Martha designed the door mm -hmm. and she is an elf from uh, Elvrhoi. So, so. Um, did they come straight from Denmark all the way here, or is there a stop somewhere he, along the You know, the he was from Denmark, a little town called Faxe, but he emigrated to the United States. Uh, and then later he and Martha, after they had married, decided they were a little tired of the Danish and, and uh, East Coast winters and wanted mm. to come out to uh, California. Yeah, good choice there. Yeah, I nice, think nice so. <laughs> I think so. Uh, so I, what, I, I take it at one point then the family turned it over to the city or well, if, preserved if, it? Well, eventually, um, Martha, uh, Vigo sadly passed away about five years after he finished the oh. home. Martha lived here another 30 years, raised the oh. kids here. Um, toward the end of her life, she was trying to decide what to do with the home, and uh, a friend uh, actually kind of helped her with that decision and said, you know, it's a, a work of art. You put art in a museum. Uh, well, let's go that direction, preserve the home. And now we have a wonderful place to share our Solvang history. Most of the Danes that came here, I'm guessing, maybe were farmers. They were or farmers the and dairy farmers. dairy farmers. We had some wonderful yeah. dairy farms here. Um, let me introduce you to our founding fathers. Okay. Pastor Gregersen, Pastor Nordentoff, Professor Hornsil. And uh, they were three Danish educators. They had emigrated from Denmark, were living in the Midwest. And uh, a lot of Danes were congregating in the Midwest, turn of the century. They wanted a place really where they could uh, realize the American dream, but also mm. uh, really hold on to the Danish culture. And uh, land in the Midwest was becoming expensive. They, you know, were uh, hearing about California, and so they came out looking for property. Uh, they kind of made the way their way down the coastline of California, mm. and were referred to this area. There was a property for sale, almost 9,000 acres. Um, and they fell in love with the climate instantly. They came in January and it was 65 degrees and sunny and green, no as opposed to minus 10 <laughs> yeah. at home. And uh, the grounds were wonderful uh, soils for planting. So a lot of the Danes, as we said, were, were farmers.
farmers and dairy farmers coming. And they bought the property. They named it Sorvang, which means sunny meadows. And then they started advertising in Danish American newspapers, mm. uh, newspapers in Denmark, uh, an opportunity to own land, which was becoming very difficult to do in Denmark at that time. Wow. So, so and you mentioned one was a reverend. So what, what was the the main religion of the Danes at the time? The uh, Danish Lutheran Church. Danish Lutheran. Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, they actually built a Lutheran church here that looks just like the country churches in Denmark. Oh, is it but still here? It is, and you can and you can visit. They actually leave it open uh, oh. to visitors. Nice, that would be interesting to see. It is a beautiful, uh, really a piece of, of artwork as well. Uh, we stayed in a Danish bubble for the first uh, several decades because of geography. So we were 100% Dane. Uh, Danish almost exclusively was spoken here for, wow. for quite so, some time. So even though the mission was here, and the Spanish mm -hmm. obviously had been here, the original settlers, yeah. uh, but they had kind of drifted out by the time... The, the Spanish the, mission was here, and the Danes did uh, create a friendship with them right mm -hmm. away. Uh, you can see that in some of the architecture here that was here in the early days of Solvang. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are Spanish arches uh, along a portion of Copenhagen Drive mm. that is not uh, typical of Danish architecture. It was a melding of those two uh, cultures and friendship of those two cultures. Oh, that's great. Would this have been typical of the average house or he was a little more well off so it was a little bigger? And he was an artist okay. and he wanted really his home to feel like uh, that uh, Danish farm home in Denmark. Mm. Uh, and he, being the artist he was, he wanted it to be very authentic. Mm -hmm. So no, this was really the one of the only homes of its kind here in Solvang. This was very open concept. Vigo was a little bit of a, ahead of his time mm -hmm. in that respect. All the beautiful ironwork that you see is original to oh, the home. Original, like, uh, for, you would walk the under piece. the beautiful ironwork and, mm -hmm. and uh, she had her dining table on, on, that side. on that side. This was their living room. Oh, that's great. Uh, the fireplace. He poured in one piece. He used really? uh, a cement and uh, black lamp soot mix, and he added diatomaceous earth into it to give it that rosy color. That is so, really cool. so almost everything in the home was uh, done by Martha and by Vigo themselves. You know, they really embraced the the town. The town really embraced them. She was not a Dane, but she did really embrace the the Danish culture. And yes, they became very um, important people in our in our community. Wow, look at this beautiful kitchen. It is. This is, wow. like I said, very most colorful. people's favorite room. Is it? I it, can see yeah, why. I mean, yeah. it grabs your attention, you know. Yeah. Well, this uh, this was all hand painted by Martha. This is all her original work. Uh, it is unretouched. She used artist oil paint, so it has lasted these almost 80 years. Vigo did all the beautiful uh, woodworking wow. uh, by hand, and it's a very traditional uh, Danish folk art. In the 18th and 19th centuries in Denmark, the um, larger manor houses uh, on the larger farms would traditionally have their kitchens painted in a floral pattern. And uh, so they kept it, she kept it very traditional in here. She was an artist uh, from Boston oh. uh, and also a very accomplished musician. So uh, together they were kind of this creative super yeah. couple. And, I bet uh, not real um, common out in the farm probably to have this kind of artist influence. Though. Well, no, she was, she really was an heiress, but oh. she kind of shunned that part of her life. She was a, more of a free spirit wow. and, and uh, was an artist at heart, musically and, you know, with her visual arts mm -hmm. as well. So I'm sure this is probably a little bigger, maybe the average person would have, but it's got all the elements everybody would have in their farmhouse kitchen? Well, this would be really a manor house on a, a, on a larger farm. Most of the farms in Denmark are, you know, were smaller and uh, would have smaller uh, Danish farm homes, really one room farm homes. Okay. So this would be, you know, really a, a manor house. Okay. Uh, so much larger, but you see the low ceilings, uh, very traditional in the, in the Danish farm homes. Denmark is the cold, dark north. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the lower ceilings help keep the heat in. So again, keeping it very traditional. The things we see decorated around here, are they original? Are they, um, let's say, recreations of what they might have? Um, some of them are original. Uh, there is original uh, copper uh, work here. Uh, there are some uh, 
It's very traditional Danish uh, porcelain, Royal Copenhagen porcelain mm. plates and plaques. Um, and uh, so some of it was very traditional um, and, and very um, old fashioned and yet she had some, some modern things in this kitchen as well. There is a photograph on the table that was taken when they lived here. And so you see she had an island here in the kitchen with a more modern stove. It's now outfitted as an 1800s kitchen with a Voss stove. Uh, the Voss stoves burned uh, coal and peat moss, mm -hmm. and uh, they were built in the 1800s in Denmark and Sweden. Now, I noticed something here. We could come out from behind the camera. <laughs> it looks like you prepared some snacks for us. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, yes. is, what is this? this These is a traditional... are Danish ebreskiva. Ebreskiva is a really traditionally in Denmark and in our Danish homes, uh, a traditional Danish dessert usually eaten at Christmas time. Okay. And they are a round pancake, really a ball, and uh, we smother them with raspberry preserves and, and powdered sugar, sometimes lingonberry if you like it more tart. Can we get a sample of those in town right now? Would we you can, yeah. if you go up to the Sorvang restaurant, okay. you'll see them turning them in the window. Oh. That, that um, looks really yeah. tasty. So that's, you that's a staple. You can't leave Solvang yeah, yeah. without having a yeah. biscuit. I know the last time we were up here, we definitely got some chocolate. <laughs> Uh, yep, the Danish oh chocolat. Is it now? Is that a big thing in the Danish culture? Absolutely. Yeah. And Ingeborg's is probably where you got your Danish chocolate. It was the on Ingeborg Copenhagen. Yes. Awesome, yeah. Ingeborg Larsen was a chocolate maker in Denmark. She and her sister emigrated mm -hmm. uh, and uh, set up their shop in Solvang more than 65 years ago. Now, so it's got an ice cream made. shop inside it. It does have That's an ice the cream. One. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. And we bought a bunch. We're like, this is going to go home. I kept it by the vents. I'm not sure it all got home. I was going to say, it shouldn't get <laughs> We <make> tried, it <laughs> but it was, it was so then good. Then you did it correctly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, is this a typical shoe of old Danes, new yes, Danes? Yes, these Danes? are the Danish wooden shoes. Okay. Uh, these days, you know, they call them clogs. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and people mistake us for a, a Dutch town when they come to Sorvang. They see wo uh, windmills and wooden shoes. Sure. Um, yes. How, uh, the Netherlands have had wooden shoes as well. The Danish wooden shoes usually were wooden on the bottom and had some kind of leather upper. So there is a little bit of difference in them. So between yeah. the, the, the Swedes, the Danes, and the um, Norwegians, uh, yeah, sorry, <laughs> well, there's got to be some common ground at one point in history, right? Very much. So the um, Denmark, Norway, and Sweden are considered the three Scandinavian uh, countries. The cultures are very similar. Uh, at one time, it was all one uh, Denmark, and then Norway and Sweden you know, gained their sovereignty. Mm -hmm. So the cultures are very much the, uh, the same. Um, there are a little bit of, of nuances that may mm -hmm. be a little different. The Danish language and the Norwegian language are more similar than, uh, say, the Norwegian and the Swede or the Danish and the Swedish language. But the cultures are very similar. You know, um, when when people emigrated, uh, quite often they would take the um, the ideology that we are in America, we're going to speak English now. And uh, my grandparents did that. My dad had to really force my my grandfather to to use his Danish. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, and now you know, gosh, we all. Uh, we love America, of course, but, but Denmark is in our blood also. Wow. What do they say? Yeah. That's a nice um, way of saying it. It's still in your blood. Uh, this looks like some stuff people might have had in their house or carried around exactly. with them Exactly. This is, is our room focused on Danish emigration. Oh, so awesome. everything that you see in this room came from Denmark, of course, by ship by then, back then, between the 17 and 1800s. See, this is why I don't think people appreciate what it took to move um, your goods. I mean, that's a, a huge trunk. I mean, this yep. is, uh, I get, is that a day bed? Is it, a, it is, it's a trundle bed. Okay. And so most of the, the farm houses, most of the farms were smaller. Uh, and so the houses were one room farm homes, not much bigger than this room. Mm -hmm. And then they would have the barn connected. Uh, so they had to make use uh, of small spaces in clever ways. So of mm -hmm. course the trundle bed, one or two little ones can sleep up top. And then at night, you know, pull the drawer out. You've got a little mat 
mattress and one or two little <laughs> sure, ones in there, and then, sure. you've, then you've got, you know, space when you, you move it back during the day in a, in a sitting area. But that would have been brought so, from the old country on a steamer ship or something. Exactly. On and a then ship. obviously probably from Denmark to America to New York or somewhere. Exactly. And so, then on the back of a, a wagon or horse something. And across, cart, yeah, oh horse and cart, yeah, a horse and cart. To get to the West so, Coast back then was It was, was not really easy. Commitment. It yeah. was. It was a daunting task. Um, and when you think about, you know, leaving your country, your homeland back then, it was usually goodbye forever. Mm -hmm. you, what would you bring with you if, if you knew you were never going to, to get back home? So what would iPhone? be those things exactly <laughs> my, yeah. now, you know? Uh, so you'd have your trunk, and uh, if you were smart, you would have your trunk built with a curved top. That way, if it wasn't flat, your curved one had to sit on top uh, yeah. of the stack. Uh, of, of all those trunks coming. That's, um, that's an interesting thought. It makes perfect sense because mm -hmm. it's probably going to be the first off, the safest, exactly. tied down well. Exactly, not stacked mm. uh, underneath. Uh, so the uh, wooden shoes, of course, here, again, in, in this, uh, but, you've got some children's and, shoes And to define well. them, the, the Danes had leather on the top, unlike... Um, the Netherlands. the Netherlands, yeah, yeah which are usually now. wooden all the way around. Now, have you ever worn them? Are they comfortable? I ha oh my gosh, we grew up wearing them. Really? We wore them to church, we wore them to school, and oh, yep, wow. uh, you know, wooden bottoms, leather uppers, and now the more modern ones are even even do, do more they make, comfortable. Make so. a, a distinctive uh, clickety clack. They do, cluck, yeah. cluck, 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 <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Now, you see more in the church, was that still because... Uh, Church was more still a formal dress at the time. Yeah, and... back uh, back when I was a kid, especially on on special uh, occasions, uh, Christmas, Easter, and also um, Danish days, our Danish mm -hmm. days festival, we always wear our Danish uh, folk dress to okay. to church. We still do that. I get that because so. I'm a Celt from Scottish festivals yes. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so I do get that, but wow. So, you know, I saw the picture behind you. And it yeah. looks like a sad scene. Uh, it is. Can you tell, you, I think you mentioned to me earlier that's a reproduction, right? It is a reproduction. Uh, is it famous? It is. Thing? It's, it's, it's actually it. my one of my very favorite pieces of art in uh, the museum. Uh, it really is a, a goodbye story. Mm -hmm. uh, this would be a typical scene of uh, a son or daughter leaving Denmark to go to America, usually. And you see the father looking stoically on. Uh, the son is off to America, and the daughter and the mother are, are distraught because it was usually goodbye forever. And I love this piece because it is my grandfather's story. He left in, at 19, and uh, his father saw him off at the docks. Like, And there were so many other people saying goodbye at the docks. My great-grandfather took out a white handkerchief and was waving it. And my oh. grandfather said, Kirsten, I could not let lose sight of that handkerchief because I knew that was the last time I was going to see my dad. Wow. And I knew if I lost sight of that, I'd lose him in the crowd. Wow. So, yeah. And then, I mean, the trip itself could have been perilous. I mean, at a certain Absolutely. time. And then yeah. to a new world. Yeah. I mean, I'm guessing sometimes they didn't necessarily have a job prearranged. They just no, and most of them the back then were not speaking English. They were not learning English. Now, mm. you know, the Danes learn English, uh, the young Danes, sure. beautiful yeah. English. Um, but back then, it was a, a new country and no, uh, a new language. And, and um, quite often, my grandfather had relatives already here that had left before him. But back at this time period, it was very rare to have somebody there who could help yeah, you. Yeah, so it took courage language, and grit. Yeah. I saw the picture of what that step stool chair. That step stool. Uh, now, is that yeah. a unique? Danish? Invention? It was a, a, a Danish design, and uh, it, 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 again, they had to make use of small spaces mm -hmm. in clever ways. Um, and so this was a step stool that was built with, like this house, no nails. Nails were very hard to come by. They were hard to forge. Um, and when you turn it over, it becomes, uh, it starts out as a chair and becomes a step stool. Really so it's cool. like magic. All right. Well, this is really yeah. interesting to see how, yeah. and I want to see you all here of who, when, why, and where they yeah. settled. This is, uh, you know, kind of uh, detailing some of the emigration of Danes to the United States in the 18 and, and early 1900s. Yeah.
You know, and that makes sense because my some of my family's kind of up in, in this area. Yeah, uh, the, the, uh, the Midwest, and yes, yeah. Um, yeah. a lot of the Scandinavians, you know, settled in those areas. It's amazing. So, how much time do you think an average person, when they want when they come, uh, would spend in the house? Most people end up, I, I think they're a little surprised at what they see here. They don't know what to expect, and they certainly don't expect what they're going to see. Um, so most people may plan on just a few minutes, but most people end up spending at least 45 minutes to an hour and even up to two hours wow. here. So. And is there a cost to yeah. come to the There is no fee. We are donation-based uh, only. Okay. So it's very accessible, and everyone is welcome. We really... Um, we really consider our place uh, a place of belonging. So, uh, and, and also, it's, it's not like we've mentioned Copenhagen Street a few times. And I know it's not the main drag in from like Buellton or that, but they kind of consider that the downtown. It it's kind of the heart of the village. And then yeah. we're probably what, two or three blocks Just off two of that? blocks away. So, about a five minute walk from Copenhagen Drive. And there's all. plenty of street parking. There, there is, yeah, parking. plenty of parking on the street. And, and of course, in, in Solvang, parking is free all day. So. Oh, oh yeah. that's, that's Yeah, there's no paid parking. Around. You must be Esther. Welcome. Nice to meet you. you yeah, too. Esther Jacobson Bates. I'm the executive director, and I also spend a lot of time in this gallery space as I'm the curator of the art exhibitions. Oh, very nice. So, is this like a rotating exhibit? We have changing exhibitions. Okay. So, about every three months or so, there's going to be something new that you see here in our gallery space. Interesting. What was this space prior to what it is now? Well, this is actually the first part of the home that was completed. It was the studio and therefore the working space of the artists Vigo and Martha Brandt Erickson. She, with her painting, and very much an accomplished teacher. So many students, young and old, took classes in here. She had lots of kids coming after school, but also did adult classes. So it's really wonderful to use this space to be able to continue to showcase artists and really become a community gathering space for the local art community. And Vigo, although he didn't survive to spend very many years making art here, he also customized the large doors here in the gallery behind you. Oh. Those glass doors, which are about 14 feet tall, accommodated uh, large slabs for his sculpting. And also mm. the two of them did a lot of painting of sets for local theatrical productions. Oh, wow. That's yeah, cool. you know, so is any of his art survive in the area? Um, well, we've got a beautiful sculpture at the front entry to the museum. It originally was a, a terracotta sculpture. It is an Icelandic horse, and now that's a bronze horse. When uh, Vigo and Martha moved here, they left their home in New Hampshire, and they couldn't take along their beloved horse. Mm -hmm. And so that the horse still sits in our courtyard to greet all that come in, and it's kind of a symbol of the museum as well. So even if you've been here a few months ago, there's a reason to come back, because this is always changing then. You got it. And you know, with the different shows, we find that the room itself kind of almost changes in the energy that occurs in here, and the people that come are different with the, each show. Mm -hmm. And that really does add into kind of the special uh, experience of coming here. You may come for the history and culture, but you might find something special in here. And I think that was especially so during the time that we had Rembrandt etchings on display here. Wow. And that was a real special opportunity and brought many people in. And then they spent time at the other end of the building learning more about Solvang's unique history and the culture of the immigrants who came here. So right now we're focused on a couple two wonderfully accomplished area artists. We have Seaburn Sorthian, who's the painter, and Aristide Dimitrios, the sculptor. Art in this exhibition space changes about every three months, and the style of art is, varies from show to show. We've had everything from photography to sculpture to bookmakers who do wonderful things. Now, I understand these sculptures are something unique about the process of how these are created. These sculptures, Eris de Demetrios, we call him Eris, was a very accomplished sculptor known for his big installations. And you probably walked by some of his art without realizing it was his work. Mm. The big sculpture of seaweed at the entrance to Monterey Bay Aquarium is an example of his art 
artwork. So he passed away in December of 2021, so not too long ago. His work, he often worked in with making models out of wood. He had a bandsaw that he was amazingly productive with and made small little maquettes, little scale models. Mm -hmm. In this piece, you can actually see that he created this originally out of wood because you can see some of his marks there from the bandsaw. As he went through the years, he began working with computer modeling and he had a vision for it so he could scale it because these are examples of his very small works, mm. almost a little bit atypical. He's noted for his big, amazing, happy, joyful pieces. Mm. Here in Solvang, we kind of like to welcome you and have you be Danish at least for the day. <laughs> you know, that kind of smell of, of pastries that waft through the breeze and yeah. the windmills that you see as you walk through town, a little kind of transports you into another place and time. And that culture that you see on display now through the architecture is something that was very strong in the early years, but not at all visible in the downtown area. Mm. At one point, it was very much more of a um, kind of a Western appearance, if anything, oh, really? and a little influence from the mission. And yeah. now that mission is you know, out of the visual corridor, so you can yeah. miss it, but you see some of those arches. So it's this wonderful blend of cultures, and we carry that on here at the museum through all of our exhibitions on our displays. That's you know, part of what makes this such an interesting community and country that we live in. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. Good to have you here at the museum thank in you. our little uh, town of Solvang. Appreciate it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little piece of Danish history at the Elvin Hoich Museum as much as I did. It's a must stop the next time you're in Solvang, California. <laughs>